Global Investigative Journalism Conference, we ask some of the world's leading experts for their top tips when investigating stories. I was lucky enough to do the story with Pace Capital. One of the key lessons is how mobile phones can be used by investigative journalists. My name's Evo Burham and I'm a lecturer at La Trobe University and I teach uh, mobile journalism and media industries. Uh, before that I'd spent 30 years in television working as a, an executive producer, a producer and a writer and I worked in current affairs and in general production. But about seven or eight years ago I'd had enough of TV and I, I left basically and I began to develop the, sh the self-shot skills that I developed in TV over a period of 20 years into a mobile journalism program. And I've been wandering around the world now working with journalists from Syria, from Yemen, um, from other EU countries and other countries in, in Asia, teaching them how to make stories, uh, politicised stories, powerful stories using their mobile phones. Think story first. It's always story, story, story. Don't get sucked in to, uh, to take a techno-determinist approach and think technology is going to be the answer. It's not. You've got to, it's not about being one of the smart mobs. You've got to be net smart. Tip number two is plan. Plan your story. Don't think that a little plan is restrictive or prescriptive. It's actually your map, your lifeline. So if you plan a story, that's actually going to help you in the field. You'll know what you're actually filming. It's also going to help in the edit suite because that initial plan becomes your first edit map. My third tip is that you have to think about technology a little bit. For example, if my boss was to send me to Africa to film lions, I couldn't do it all on a mobile phone. I'd be eaten. So what I'm saying is you've got to actually think story first. So if you think story, you'll work out what technology you need to make the story. And then it's really interesting with mobile journalism because in some countries, even a mobile phone is too much. In other countries, uh, like in the EU, EU, for example, they really love technology and they love to put a lot of gadgets on their phones. But in the Middle East, they use just a mobile phone because they don't want to be painted as a target. So technology is important, but you decide on technology by thinking story first. And tip four is B-roll, or cutaways, or clipper builder. It's the overlay footage, the cover footage, that you use to put over a bit of narration, or to put over an interview when you cut an interview down. When you think you've shot enough B-roll, shoot some more, you haven't got enough. And the, the key is to shoot your story first and then shoot your B-roll around your story when you know what you need. But that doesn't mean that you don't shoot your B-roll before you start shooting story. For example, if you turned up here to this conference and there were a whole bunch of people yelling and screaming outside, you'd shoot that when you got there before you shot the interview about that yelling and screaming. B-roll is the key to making great video stories. B-roll and narration, if you can get B-roll and narration right, if you can learn to write in and out of pictures, you'll be a great video storyteller. My fifth tip is to do with editing. Edit the story first and then worry about your B-roll. The idea is to get your structure down very, very quickly using even draft narration. Just get something down to get what I call the story bounce happening. Once you have the story bounce happening, you can then move the blocks around till your structure is right, editorially, legally, and for whatever reason, and then you can paste it up with B-roll, give it its breathing space. So edit the story first, edit it quickly. If you're walking around nervously, worried about starting an edit, because you've shot too much footage, the best way to fix that feeling is to start. Don't worry if you're wrong. If you're wrong, you'll know it really soon and you'll be able to fix that. But if you don't start, you'll just get more and more stressed. So start the edit, cut the story. My most essential tip, it's really simple. Think story, story, story. When you're thinking story, you really need to think scrap. Scrap is a storytelling uh, toolkit. It, the story, uh, understand the story and you'll know who the characters are. Understand the characters and you'll know how to actually put them together, which is the next part, R, R for resolution. What's the structure of the story? A is for actuality. Actuality is all the real stuff that you need to film, all the stuff that's happening. It's the stuff that gives your story currency. And P is for production. It's the logistics. Even short stories, you should be thinking about those. In the old days, we used to do it in the train on the way over. Now we actually, I don't know when we do it because things happen so much quicker but we need to think about scrap.
There have been a lot of great Mojo stories made with people that I've worked with. The, the most recent is the award-winning Eastern Gateway, which is a film about refugees um, uh, leaving in the Middle East and moving across to a safer, safer life. Um, but there have also been really uh, stories that are close to my heart. Indigenous people in Australia who, who actually did the Mojo course and then ended up becoming journalists, getting full-time work as journalists. That's really important to give them full-time work in their own communities. That's very hard to do. In Timor, we have some young journalists that five years ago learned how to do this. They said to me, we would never be able to create video, never, unless we were able to do it on these phones. We don't have the, the, the funding, we don't have the ability to get video cameras. They're still doing it five years later and, and doing it really, really well. So there's many, many good examples of mobile journalism. There are 7.1 billion mobile phones in the world. There are 3 billion smartphones. That means almost half the world's population has the ability to tell life-changing stories. And that's the real potential of Mojo. It's a way for us to democratise our skills, to give back to people who are interested in changing lives in their own communities. That's my case study, my example of where it's been successful. <laughs>